Vietnam by motorbike, a journey that has no structure apart from reaching the capital of Vietnam in just three weeks time and hopefully in one piece. Now that the Vietnamese New Year is coming to a close, it's time for us to leave the comfortable touristic town of Hoi An and dash up to the Ho Chi Minh Road to escape the crowds and explore the vast Vietnamese jungle. In this episode, we find ourselves absolutely gobsmacked by the endless elegance of this country. Traversing a stretch of road that made us stop and gaze into the distance more times than we can even remember. And for some reason, Mitchell also decides to go on a reckless mission, which you can say I wasn't all that happy about. Have you seen what they make these shits out of? Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna cry, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> driving to do on this next stint and it's just basically our main mission now is to get to Hanoi and battle with whatever weather conditions we have. It's another typical day on the bike. We went to a shopping centre to get some layers, too expensive, way too expensive so We've basically stopped some food before. We've got two hours left until we get to our accommodation, which is meant to be really nice. That's the only saving grace. We've been caught in rain already. So we picked up some bag ponchos to keep our bags dry. But apart from that, it's just rain and straight roads. So hopefully once we leave here, we'll start seeing a bit more nice scenery. As the mountains in the distance grew closer, so did our excitement for being back out of the city. Even the ominous grey clouds lingering above couldn't dampen our mood. Twisting and turning up towards the Ho Chi Minh Road was slowly revealing what beauty was to unfold the following day. Before we knew it, we were closing in on our accommodation for the night, which we were a little bit dubious about, being that it had only been reviewed a couple of times. I really had a funny feeling that it was gonna like not exist or something. It looks really nice. It looks really nice. This place that we're in is absolutely beautiful. It's like the densest jungle we've been in so far, I think, and it yeah. just goes for miles. Pathetic. Snack room being on the back of that bike. <laughs> Uh, this place is really nice, really nice, although we are realising that they don't have heating here and obviously it still gets pretty cold and we're up in the mountains right now and it's cold and the aircon only does aircon and we've got a fan but no heating. Well, what we're staying in is like this villa on the top of the hill, it's so cool but this is pretty nice for us. This is pretty posh. Good morning. We have woken up a little bit later than usual today. It's around 9am. We've had a nice little lie-in, which has been really nice. And then I also kind of forgot where we were. And then we've opened the curtains and we're in the mountains. And that's a pretty cool feeling but we actually went for some dinner last night just down there. We didn't film anything, we just went down there to get some food and then get into bed, basically. And the lovely owner of this place was chatting to us and just got onto the conversation of what we did. And we basically were like, we'll take some photos for you because this place only has six reviews that we can find. And we decided to stay here anyway because we just know that reviews don't always mean everything, especially in little places like this. So we have been and said that we'll take some photos and yeah, edit them for her for the listing on Agoda and stuff to send to guests and she was very, very grateful. So that's what we're going to do this morning, which is pretty fun, a little 
little project. But we are going to get some breakfast first. And she said she was going to make us some. So that's what we're going to do now. We've come out for breakfast and there's some locals here. And they've been asking her where we're from. And she said it's very strange to see Westerners and stuff up here. But I'm liking it. And the tunes. <laughs> That's the strongest, sweetest coffee I've ever had. That is all condensed milk. Jeez. Mitch is editing his first little gig. Photography gig. They probably look terrible. Do they look good? I think so. Would you stay at this place if I was to take these photos? Hopefully they get some people out of having nice photos. Yeah, they'll have to maybe put on a couple of photos that you take it. Yeah. I would stay here if I saw these photos. But you have, and they were much worse photos that you've seen. Yeah, true. Mm. Have a night trip. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. See you thank soon. You. Bye, bye. 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 Thank you. The owner was so nice, and it's it always just makes the trip so much nicer when there's nice hosts and people where you stay in, especially in such a small little place like this. She was even telling us last night that the village the, that's close to here is so poor, and um, how it's so unusual for them to get any tourists up here just because everyone normally sticks to the coast on this route or normally at this point as well people will get the train the overnight train further north and miss out this part but we're all about seeing the beauty and seeing as much of the untouched bit especially a bit in as possible so that's why we're doing this so far it's been the best decision that we've made you've seen 121 kilometers without one turn now okay. until we get to the next place the next 120 k's are going to be beautiful hopefully but very quiet Not even on the map. Oh my god. This literally isn't even on the map as a body of water. Is this another dam? Wow. We've only been we've four minutes away. From where we just stayed. So we found the corner. I reckon that's been flooded on purpose then for that dam. Yeah, jeez. Yeah, that dam we went past yesterday, I reckon that this has been flooded from that. Well, if that's anything to go by, it's gonna be pretty nice riding today. That is stunning. How quiet. <laughs> it's gonna be good. Wow. Oh, that's so cool.
That is a tilter. We just stumbled across this suspension bridge and Mitch thought it'd be fun to just drive over it without any warning. That is funny. Oh, you're going again. Beautiful, but no, no, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Mitch, 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 Mitch. No, you got to get a photo on here. Mitch. That Please is keep amazing. Going. Please keep going. Why aren't you going? Because I'm getting a photo. Oh my god. I... Jump off, jump off. Oh, fucking run off. Oh, Mitch, how do you trust this structure enough to be there? Have you seen what they make this shit out of? Oh. 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 I'm gonna cry, I'm gonna cry. Mom, have you seen it Mitch, I'm not looking. Oh. Oh, I'm gonna cry, I'm gonna cry, I'm gonna cry. Oh my god, I feel like I'm going to be sick. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's actually making me want to be sick. Holy. I had no prior warning, we were just driving along this road here. And Mitch just saw it. So Mitch, me and Mitch just went straight over it. And now he's decided to stop. Oh my god, I'm not a fan of them kind of things. Surely I won't, wouldn't be just the only one who would freak out in that sort of situation. Mitch is still just there happily. He's just he's got a massive smile on his face. I don't even know if you... Okay, you'll have to come... Yeah, you'll have to come get it. Why? Well, you've got to come here anyway. Why? I need to get the drone off here to get a photo. Uh, I don't want to go back across. Oh, oh it wobbles so much. It, like, you don't know the height. That's where we saw it. Oh man. Some of these just wobble too. Oh my god. But... Ah! <laughs> Mitch, I'm not enjoying this. This isn't fun for me. I just want to get a photo. You've got to get a photo of you. Look at this. I admit it is a bit sketchy. Yes. The, have you seen it? No, don't, don't, I won't, don't, I won't, don't. I won't. I won't. I won't. I you just, did, oh. It's how much the bike rocks when you're moving. Mm, even you moving is making me feel sick. <laughs> oh, you can feel the movement of you. Mitch, where are you going? I need my phone. Oh, well, I need you to come over here. <laughs> Oh my god, it's the bike. Mitch, stop! Don't even talk about it. If you want me here, fucking have this. Holy <laughs> language. <laughs> oh, it's, I can feel. <laughs> You'll be fine. Just stay still. Do you think you'll last until you have a photo? No. What if, what if someone else wants to come across? Then I'll have to move the bike off. I'll need to get off. Yeah, just run. What freaks you out most about it? The structure of it. The fact that one footstep makes it move. Yeah, but that's the, that's the design of it. It's meant to move. Oh, but it makes my stomach go. It's 
It's like being on that boat all over again. I'll try to be as quick as I can. There's dogs either side that look like they're going to kill you. Oh my god. That is brilliant. Could you tell how much it was wobbling? Yeah. I don't know if you could on camera, but I could see it. I'm absolutely loving this road at the minute. Are you enjoying it? Yeah, it is, it is a lot of fun. It's just twist and turn and we're just following this river the whole way. Like this, this is flowing back to that massive dam, dam that we've yeah. just been to, isn't it? This is awesome. The road's perfect. And the water's so clear too. Oh, I love it. Having fun. Come on, let's go. Google Maps is just showing more and more windy roads as well. Winding on through. had to pull over again and I had to get Mitch to get the camera out because you could just get glimpses of what is below on the road but then it's only when you can find a little pull through where you can actually see through it just blows your mind and we've stopped here and there's a little village below all these rice paddies and then you can hear kids down there because it's so quiet kids playing I think there's like a little bit of a football pitch or something on this side of the village and then there's the road that we've been taking on the other side and then like little dirt tracks as well it's just so cool it's like a proper glimpse into a rural Vietnamese village and I love that I love the rawness of seeing this We could record this whole thing and just upload the whole road. Like, it just doesn't stop. The, the surface is getting progressively worse, so I've had to slow down a bit, but apart from that, well, it just makes you take in the scenery more. On, I'm, I'm bamboozled. Bamboozled is the word. We've stopped literally two minutes, no, yeah, about two minutes down the road from where we last were. Because this is like abandoned building. It looks mint. So I've just been getting some photos. We have no idea why it's here, nor what it once was or anything like that. There's someone living in that far building over there. But this looks, looks like an important building. It looks government, like government building. Yeah. It's funny because when I was looking up this route this morning, I was trying to see what there would be to see to stop at on the way, and nothing came up. And we've stopped the most times we've ever have done. Yeah. We could have stopped so many more times I as know. well. But we're also not booked into anywhere tonight. So this homestay that we've got on our maps. No, it's a guest house. Or, it's like or a, a guest house, yeah. yeah. It, we don't even know if we're, we can stay there yet, so... <laughs> yeah. Oh no, there is a few more places, so we'll see. Yeah. If not, then we will have to drive two hours. Yeah. But I'm sure we will be able to find somewhere there. We'll if just... we actually make it there. Yeah, if we make it there at this point. Too many stops. We need to just... Yeah. 
We need, I was gonna say we need to just not get distracted, but it's gonna be pretty hard. What? I don't know if we're freaking out about nothing, but this is the first like white water buffalo we've seen. They're so nice. I don't know if that's a common thing or not. Yeah, it looks like an albino water buffalo. I'm, I'm gobsmacked. Have we just seen a rare phenomenon? have made it to hopefully where we'll be staying tonight we've just got here and we saw like i don't know if you can tell but it's like all under construction but i think there's someone here we've seen one guy and then yeah mitch is in there now just i suppose just seeing but we've just drove through this little town and there is not much going on I, don't, I haven't seen anywhere for food yet either and we also need a shop I need some toothpaste so hopefully we can find something I don't know if there's more further down and they've got space here because my bum after that last bit of that trip oh my gosh it took me a good couple of minutes to get off the bike just it was yeah it was getting rough and yeah it looks like we'll be able to stay here which is good <laughs> which is just now trying to say that we want one room two people and stay this is one of the rough rolls we've stayed in oh okay hope we can find somewhere for food because i didn't see anywhere open there'll be somewhere it was the worst meal i've ever had in my entire life i couldn't eat it <laughs> so this is our room <laughs> We've just quickly spoke to Mitchell's mum and she said it looked like a sauna and I genuinely see the representation of that. It's it's not the worst, but it's not the best. We've stayed in a very... At least the bed's soft. Yeah, I know I was just comparing it to the first night in Bangkok. Like It'll do for the night. Yeah, the bed's soft, so that's always a plus. And it's not too cold in here. We've got no. a prison TV. Yeah, look at that frame. Oh, but you know, it's going to do the job and we've got a blanket and towels and hot water. We've already checked the hot water so you can't complain. It'll do the job and all that we're going to do is go get some food now and then come back and then I want to get into bed and go to sleep. And it's five o'clock. It's been a long day. But now we've got to go try and find some food because I didn't see anywhere and this place is dead. So the hunt for food is still continuing on. We cannot find anywhere. Uh, the coffee shops are open, but the coffee shops don't do any food. Yeah, we've been walking for like 10 minutes and it doesn't look like one place so far has been open for food. We've, we've been to a mini mart, got some toothpaste, which is a good thing. But if there's nothing open, then we're gonna have to get snacks at these mini marts that are open. But I'm starving, we've had one meal today, and that's it. There's places like this that have got food stuff outside, but they all look short. I feel like this is something to do with tech more than anything. Yeah. Like, there are always food places, they're just not open. <laughs> <laughs> we found somewhere for food. Just don't know what the game is now that we're here and Mitch is asking me to go off and ask them. But I said I'd rather sing to the camera or just not eat than go up there and ask. It's, I just can't do it. Why can't you take it for once rather than me just go up there and awkwardly ask them and then they won't have any clue and I'll have to point at food? I thought, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Just go point it with that little boy as well. You could do that. No, you do it. Oh, I'm starving. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mitch is really hungry, so... 
There's two things on the. Ah, oh, thank, oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> two, two, please. Yeah. yeah thank you. They all worked out for us. Two of. Do you eat them? This I don't is the know. awkward thing of what is everyone else doing. Did I? <laughs> Are they boiled? Oh yeah, they're hot. So how'd you eat the boil? Uh, and then this thing's in here. I don't know what's inside that. <laughs> Little dog parcels. Stop. This is fun. It's not fun when you're tired, but it's fun. Are you tired? Yeah, I do feel a bit, I'm flogging a bit today. Yeah. I was just saying to Mitch though, I'm glad that we came out before it went dark. Because there's nothing worse that, than being in a place where it's a bit derelict anyway, and then it being dark. Somewhat more creepy about it. And they've also got music coming out of the lampposts, <laughs> which is even weirder. But, but I'm, I'm always like because everyone's looking at us anyway, um, just because we're foreigners. Um, the fact that they might judge us for how we even eat the food is the scary part. Well, they've just got food behind us at the same time, so I'm hoping that we can copy what they do. Have they got them things? Yeah, exactly the same. Okay, okay, you watch them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone else travels and can relate to this, let us know if you've been in these situations where you have to watch what anyone else around you is doing for food. I'm well impressed. This looks all good. I think it's chicken, not duck. Oh yeah. I think it's chicken. Are you sure? Yeah. We've just been absolutely stitched up. <laughs> <laughs> that meal cost 190,000. Which is by far the most expensive roadside meal we've had. Yes, which is the most expensive thing. I didn't eat mine. It was absolutely, the, it was the worst meal I've ever had in my entire life. I couldn't eat it. <laughs> I kept looking at it Mitch and I, if I thought about it too much, I thought I was going to be sick. I, and I am not a fussy eater. I will eat anything and there's not anything that can be put in front of me that I won't eat. And I've just left that full meal. Yeah, apart it was from the, bad. Apart from the eggs. If you've ever been to like Southeast Asia and you know what the roads smell like, that's it, what the it, soup it, tasted like. <laughs> it was awful. It was, that's what I had to like stop thinking about in my head because it just tasted like the streets and it was duck and I don't like duck. I think it was chicken. No, it, it was duck, Mitch. I'm pretty... I'm pretty sure that was chicken. Oh, the, oh, well, whatever. It was a poor chicken. And I can't believe we've just been down 190,000. Yeah. That is terrible. Oh, well. So now we're going to go back to the shop that I got my toothpaste from and try and get some snacks. I can taste it. I might just like take a bit of this toothpaste now just to get it out of my mouth. <laughs> I've got a fisherman's friend. Yeah. Do you want one? Thanks. And also, when I went up there as well, there was other options for what we yeah, had. Yeah, I know. That's what I was, I was saying. We got proper stitched up because he'd give us the massive chicken legs that had been out all day and gone cold so he could charge us more and everyone were getting nice little potatoes and sausages. Yeah. Proper stitched up. But that's our, that's what we get when we don't know what they're even serving. Yeah. Well, that's what you get for coming to a country and not learning their language before. Yeah. I've tried my best. I know most of the food that's on the sign most of the time but when there's not even anything to even like go off it's really hard isn't it yeah when you just know yeah what when your order is two two yeah, yeah. <laughs> gosh never again this shop has saved the day it's only about six o'clock but we're gonna go back and eat this and chill yeah. for me more riding tomorrow. We've got to get our energy back. Right, we'll catch you in the morning. This is where you'll catch us in the next episode when we wake up to a stark realisation that riding through Vietnam with barely any gear isn't such a great idea. A long few days of battling across the Ho Chi Minh Road in extreme weather conditions pushes us to our limits. Make sure to subscribe as this is the leg of the journey that you do not want to miss.